All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is uh, seven o'clock. Um, I think people are still going to be joining in, uh, but I know Dr. Song has much to cover, so I want to go ahead and get him introduced and get the meeting started and people can join as they come along and uh, enjoy today's uh, meeting. So just for uh, brevity, um, Dr. Song has been with us now for almost a full two years. Uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor to work with Dr. Song and to have him as part of this meeting and for him to have grown and led this meeting to what it is today. Um, Dr. Song, as everyone knows, is from Asan Medical Center where he had a, a very full career and is one of the GI stint innovators of his day. From those experiences, uh, he has taken his experiences and shared them with us here, and he is about to move on and start to share those experiences with a group in China at Xingzong University. Um, we wish him the best of luck there, um, and thank you for your time with us. Um, without further ado, he's going to present two topics today. One is some tips uh, to help lead the authorship conference. Um, I think those are to help uh, myself as as far in and those that, that are participating in this meeting um, and then he's also going to talk um, about his uh, stent technology as it relates to obesity and um, in a presentation titled minimally invasive therapies for treating the obesity so without further ado um, let's all welcome dr Saul. I thank you very much, Dr. Walker, for your kind introduction. This is my last time to join this meeting. What are the reasons for writing scientific papers? Scientific papers are the essential source of supply of medical knowledge. And through writing papers, you can share your experience with other scholars and to remain up to date with the current literature. In addition, the number of publications is often used as a parameter of an academic caliber of an individual department, university, and country. As a result, research productivity is held in high regard by the academic community. Like deaths and taxes. Writing papers cannot be avoided as you are a scholar, so its pressure and demand have given reason to the saying, publish or perish. Last Monday at this meeting, we reviewed an article written by Dr. Lopera entitled Ex Vivo Perfusion Model for tips training. This is Dr. Joseph Rush, who published the first tips procedure in American Journal of Surgery in 1971. Dr. Rush invited me to the 1993 Western Angiographic and Interventional Society meeting held in Portland, Oregon, and asked me to present two papers. It was my first time meeting Dr. Rush at Dodo Institute and my first time to give talks at an international meeting. The majority of invited speakers were relatively old and renowned it except for me. I asked him, how did you know of me and what made you decide to invite me to this meeting? He said, I read your articles published in radiology and nobody does lacrimal stent placement in Western countries. Since then, as my mentor, he has encouraged me to pursue the process of innovation and discovery. Three 
years before he died, I asked him to give me his word of wisdom for junior interventional radiologist in Korea. This was his reply. I always shared widely my experience by lectures, publishing data and writing books so that others could learn and improve their practice. In 1994, I visited Dr. Castaneda Juniga at the University of Minnesota for one week right before 1994 RSNA conference to observe the clinical and research activity. That was my first time to meet Dr. Castaneda Juniga, but he had many papers published in radiology. That's why I decided to visit him for just one week. Two days after my arrival at the University of Minnesota, there was a party to celebrate Dr. Amprech. This is Dr. Amprech for his publication of 303 articles. I was shocked and asked the secretary for a copy of his publication, which was as thick as a book. After analyzing his CV, I met him, and this is his publications, 603 papers. And he became my role model. After the meeting, uh, this is my publication data in 2007. Here you can see I had one more paper published in radiology than him. Uh, thanks to his encouragement, I have continued to write papers through my career. And you know, this is uh, Dr. Castaneda Juniga. He joined me and my farewell party at Dr. Lopez's house two weeks ago. It was wonderful to see my mentor. So first mentor was Dr. Empress, and then Castaneda Juniga and me, and then Dr. Lopez. Here are five tips on leading the authorship conference. First, read the manuscript at least five times. I am very happy to know that Dr. Walker has completely replaced my leadership. And read more than three representative articles out of the references. See what the other author, uh, authors have not seen and try to provide constructive criticism to improve its quality. I know that scientific writing is a skill, one that improves with the effort. So try to make the effort of writing a habit. Needless to say, publications are critical for successful research as well as in academia. By the way, we had a total of 20 translational research topics by September 21st last year, but we have finished just the two papers. As I mentioned before, it's time to have one technologist and two doctors from abroad. I will show you two examples. Regarding the one technologist, this is the Mr. Park, a radiologic technologist in ASA Medical Center, who joined the authors conference in 2005. It took three years for him to be listed on the junior author and seven years for him to write a paper as the first author. In other words, it took me 
seven years to teach him how to write a paper in English from scratch. It is amazing to know that once he published his first paper, he began to write five to six papers every year, including radiology and gastrointestinal endoscopy. As for the two doctors from abroad, Dr. Chao from China had stayed with me for three years and wrote a total of 21 papers before he became a faculty member at Peking Union Medical College in China, the best university in China. He has reached the unprecedented high level of writing scientific papers and eventually surpassed me. There is a wonderful problem in China, Qing Chu Weiran. I believe that the US is losing the competition with Asian countries or with regard to publication. Why? Because there are publications in Asian countries, publication in the scientific indexed journals as the first author are becoming more and more important because there are strict publishing requirements for hiring and promotion. For example, in Korea, most of the University hospitals and medical school require three to six papers as the first author for hiring and promotion. In addition, it is a requirement to have two papers before they finish their residency program. Probably uh, it's time to have this kind of a publication rule in the state, but who can better catch?